Today, many single people find it's economical to purchase a home together. In this video, I'm going to tell you a story about two women, both with young children attending the same school district, who did just that. We'll find out how that turned out. Hello again, everyone. I'm attorney Robert Flusses. If this is your first time here, now would be the best time to subscribe because if you do subscribe, you'll know where to go to get answers to your legal questions. Well, think about all of the benefits of two unmarried individuals purchasing a home together. Both have young children and want their families to be close to the school district where their children attend. Plus, you get to consolidate your expenses, watch the other children while one is gone, share the yard work, have a yard where your children can actually play together, share transportation costs, and share furniture, a barbecue grill, kitchen utensils, and set up the bedrooms for your children any way you like, and more. Well, you don't have to be married, but you benefit from a lifestyle that's in the best interest of both parties. Sounds really good, right? But a lot of people don't think about the potential consequences they could face if a problem develops in this type of relationship. Well, without pre-planning and executing an agreement that dictates what will happen in that event, this arrangement could explode in your face. And in this case, both of them never even thought about that. The euphoria of the economic advantages interfered with their good judgment. About a year after they purchased the house and moved in with their families, the relationship started to break down. Suddenly, one of the parties moved out, leaving the other party holding the bag. Well, the vacating party's position was this. Since she moved out and the other party continued to occupy the home, she believed that she had no further obligation to pay, for example, the mortgage they held together, utilities, sewer and water bill, and other expenses to operate the home. The vacating party wanted the house to be sold immediately. That left the other party with a big dilemma. It was the middle of winter and a poor time to sell the home, plus the school was still in session. They tried to work it out on their own, but all efforts failed. So they both hired attorneys. The attorneys tried to work out a compromise. The negotiations were initially unsuccessful. One of the attorneys even threatened to sue the other party to partition their client's ownership interest in the home. That position would cause further delay by litigating the difference of their positions in court for months and at greater legal costs. Eventually, they were able to reach a compromise, but the problem here was that both parties had to spend hundreds of dollars in legal fees to reach a compromised agreement, which should have been done prior to purchasing the house jointly. Well, you know the answer to that question. Both parties should have hired attorneys prior to entering into the home purchase. That would have allowed both parties to memorialize an agreement that if either one of the parties abruptly left, or if one of the parties married, or even died during the ownership period, what would happen? It would have been more cost effective to enter into this type of agreement prior to the purchase. And both parties would have then peace of mind that in the event things turned sour, a written agreement would control the disposition of the property. You know, a lot of people think they can avoid the payment of attorney's fees to draft such an agreement because they think everything's going to work out if things collapse on them. Well, rarely does that mentality work. So the message I'm sending to you is as follows. If you ever enter into such a relationship, you need to pre-plan, just like everything else you do in your life that could potentially incur liability for you. And one last thing. Both parties did attempt on their own to draft an agreement when the controversy developed. Obviously, that didn't work. The agreement was unclear and really didn't specifically address the equitable division of the personal property that they purchased together and the equity remaining in the home. I'm attorney Robert Flesses. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you in my next video.